This is question six from the 2019 Ordinary Level Leave Insert uh, paper two. You can find a link in the description below to an image of this question if you don't have it readily available already. As you can see, the question is made up of two parts and it's all about geometry. Part one is gonna ask us to draw a question, to construct it, so we could call that a construction question. And part two is going to ask us um, to find some angles uh, in and around triangles and circles. Unfortunately for this question, they really to get full marks, you need to be a very exact in, it, in your drawings. Um, you need to use a compass, a ruler, protractor. I do not have them on the board, so I'm not going to be able to give you an exact answer here, but I can show you how to do the question. So they give you some bits of information. They give you, they tell you it's a parallelogram. They would like to draw a parallelogram. So we need to know what that is. Um, it's something that usually looks something like this, uh, where this side is equal to this, and this side is equal to this side. That's a parallelogram. And it gives us lots of information here. PQ is equal to nine centimeters. So it's nine centimeters. I'm not gonna be using centimeters, obviously. Uh, PS is equal to five centimeters and SPQ is equal to 65. Now it doesn't tell us where any of these sides are. We're gonna to have to figure some of that out ourselves. Or a better way to think of it is we can make up anywhere we want. PQ, we just need a line that's uh, nine centimeters long. And they gave us a line to start with. So I'd simply get my ruler. I don't have an actual one with measurements on it, but I'd get a ruler, measure out nine centimeters. And we simply put a mark there and that becomes Q. So that is how we would draw Q, that's nine centimeters long. Next uh, part would be to draw S, I think, because we now know where S would be. And um, if Q is here, S must be somewhere up here. Like it's not down here because we've chosen to draw it up here. We can have the same question, uh, instead of drawing it this way, we could draw something this way. It would be the same question, but we'll, we'll choose to draw it up. That, that's not going to make any problem to us. So S has to start at P and it has to be somewhere up here. Maybe it doesn't look like this shape. Maybe it looks like this. We have to bear that in mind. So how do we do that? We know it's five centimeters away from here. So we simply get a compass. Now again, I do not have a compass. So I've made uh, one here with a string. And I measure out on a ruler um, five centimeters. So I put this onto a ruler and measure out one, two, three, four, five centimeters. So um, I then just use the compass to mark off a circle, mark off a circle like that. Everywhere on that circle is five centimeters away from here. So S is somewhere up there. Now we need more information though, and luckily they gave it to us. They told us SPQ is 60 degrees. That means starting at S, maybe it's over here, going to P and going to Q, the angle it leaves in there is 65. So it means it's not over here, that would be over 90 degrees. Um, that would make a 90 degree angle. 65 must be somewhere over here, somewhere over here. But we don't need to be inexact. We would get, I don't have anything that would look anything like a protractor, but uh, I think you all know what a protractor looks like. Just in case, I'll draw one out here something like this with all the measurements on there. So you get that, placing it here and measure out 65 degrees. Put a little tick where 65 degrees is. And uh, simply then get your ruler and draw it out like um, so. And we have just found S. Here is S up here. Okay. What's next? We need to find, uh, what, what's the last letter in this parallelogram? Um, or, or, and it must be somewhere over here. Let me clear off this fake protractor. Make sure I can fit it. It must be somewhere up here. Now there's a couple of choices. One, we could get 65 degrees here. And um, then we could parallel to this. It's a little awkward to do. The easiest way to do this is um, through your compass again. Simply, I know that this length of this line here, I can't see it yet, but this length must be five. Let me put this one in here, five centimeters over here. This also must be five. So let's get the same length we got here. And this I can do a bit more exact. And then um, draw it here. Unfortunately, it's gonna go up into my title here, 
where there's a shine on the screen. Apologies for that. And we also know this length from here to down here is nine centimeters. So again, I can copy this out here with my one. I just get the same length as the bottom one. This now has that exact length. And I mark it off. It's gonna fit right about exactly there. And um, I just finished the question off by ruling in these lines. And this is how you get full marks. The exam does want to see these lines. They do want to see how you would get this. As I said, there's one or two options maybe how to have done that last bit. But this by far would be the most common. So do not, it's okay to use a pencil for all of these bits, uh, but do not rub them out afterwards, okay? Make sure they still can see these lines, especially where a circle arches, a circle mark, um, a compass inscribed mark. They are looking for those. They then ask us to find the area of this parallelogram. Let me uh, make a little bit of space here. Now, there is a formula in our tables, I'll put it up on the screen right now, that tells us the area of a parallelogram. It is A is equal to, I guess, A, B, sine C, where A and B would be a length here, and a length here, and an angle here. All things we know, let me put it in this angle there, 65. So in fact, we know all of those things. They give us a little picture in the formula book to help us with this. If for some reason you could, didn't remember there was a formula, you could do this using trigonometry. Now, I wouldn't expect all students to do this, but I'll just point it out very quickly how that would work. We need the height. The area of a parallelogram is the base times the height. That's a, it's another formula for a parallelogram. So you would need this height, and you do that through trigonometry through a right angle triangle here. And that would be sine of this angle is equal to the height divided by the um, hypotenuse. But that's already here. The sine of this angle, instead of dividing by five on the other side of the equals, let me quickly write that out. Let's say this is H. Um, sine 65 is equal to H divided by five. Sine 65 is equal to H divided by five. You don't need this, by the way, if you have this formula. Um, multiply both sides by 5. I get 5 sine 65 is equal to h. And then the area of a parallelogram is equal to the base, which is 9, multiplied by the height, which is 9 times 5 times sine 65. I've just actually answered the question. This is uh, the full marks. If you use the formula that they give you, in the formula book, it, A is equal to A being the base, B being the diagonal height is 5, sine, and C being the angle between the two, 65. Same answer we would got using trigonometry. I'd, um, yeah, I wouldn't expect students to do this way. You, you are meant to be able to do this way. Another question in your exam might look like this. You will do trigonometry and other questions. But uh, so whichever way you do it, you get to this point, you put this into a calculator and you will get the answer 40.78. That's rounded off to two decimal places, yes. So that is the area of this parallel. Okay, I'm gonna rub this out and we'll do part B. Here we have part B. And again, apologies for the crude drawing. I'm doing my best. And this question simply asks us to find alpha and beta. Find out what, let, what uh, angles are these. So these are 52 degrees is written in there. And that's all, that's all the measurements to get. No more lengths, no more angles, just this one 52. But it really, there's so much information here. So I'd like to point out um, what bits of information, because this is where we're, how we're gonna solve this question. You need to be able to find the hidden bits of information in here. Um, one thing you should look for, and if you haven't done this question already, please pause the video, try it yourself now. But uh, one thing we sh should always notice in these questions is the radius. Always be keeping an eye out for the radius. Here is a radius, here is a radius, and here is a radius. That means all those lengths are the same length. That means these two sides here, these two sides, both these triangles are um, uh, isosceles triangles. So see this one here? Let me redraw that. What if I drew it just like this? Much more common to see it like this. 
then that means, uh, let's see, if we turn this around, 52 is here and alpha is here. So if I ask them um, students, even all the way down to primary level, what, what angle is alpha? I hope most of them will tell me alpha is equal 52 because that's how an isosceles triangles work. Okay, and um, something else I can probably say is this one's also isosceles. This angle up here is 2 beta. Doesn't, doesn't help me get the answer though, so I'm just going to need some more information. And that information is a little harder. I wouldn't expect a primary school student to know this one. But that information is this triangle here, this big triangle. Let me draw this again here. This big triangle here. Well, that's good enough for me. Where this is a 2 beta and this is 52. What angle is up here? What angle is here? And it's something you are expected to know. That is the secret to this question. And the, the, the reason you are expected to know that is because it goes through the center of a circle. It's, um, it's a hemisphere of a circle here. This triangle's inside a hemisphere of a circle. This angle here is always 90 degrees. We know it to be 90 degrees because it's inside half of a circle like that. And that's really how we solve this. Everyone should remember, three angles add up to uh, 180 degrees. So 52 plus 90 plus 2 beta is equal to 180. So what's 2 beta? Well, we just take these two away from 180. 2 beta, or using algebra, we take these two away from the left, take them away from the right. 180 minus 90 minus 52. Um, so 2 beta is equal, what's this, 90 minus 52 is 38. Uh, check with a calculator if you're not good at doing them in your head. And that means beta is equal to half of this is 90. Again, check with a calculator if you're not good at doing them in your head. Don't make silly mistakes at that point. So that's the answer to part B. Alpha is equal 52 and beta is equal to 19. The real, the real uh, trick to this question was simply the 90 degrees in the hemisphere of a circle. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, there's probably a couple of other ways to do this. So if you like to ask any questions about that, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Until then, have a good day.